and live. I've got a hair in my shirt. I'm putting my sticker on. There we go. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Starting the, the stream off right with profanity and some chapstick. <laughs> chapstick? Does this count as chapstick? I don't think so. Hey everyone, welcome. I'm just carmexing for a second. <sighs> here we go. I'm Sam. If you're new here, welcome. It's good to have you. This is going to be a Q&A like all of my live streams are Q&As. <laughs> do I do that intentionally? Probably. Hello, uh, Abdul... Abdali, Abdal, usernames. Hello, everyone. So what I talk about is something called phase two, <laughs> which I just get so excited about because I got suckered by mainstream manifestation. I followed mainstream manifestation for a long time and I put a lot of hope into it. Hey, changing the mood. I put a lot of hope into it. I invested a lot of <laughs> emotional energy into mainstream manifesting and I didn't get shit out of it. <laughs> uh, but there's an alternative to that and it's something called phase two. Phase two has been around for literally thousands of years. It's not always been referred to as phase two, but there are, it, it's like kind of like what Neville Goddard teaches. It's referenced in the Bible in some places. There's an ancient Japanese book called the Shobogenzo that talks about it. It's just like better. <laughs> it's mainstream manifesting with all the confusing like fucking frequency alignment, universe granting wishes, positivity bullshit. And so that makes it really effective because you're not confused. It's very easy to understand, very simple, very straightforward. Uh, so welcome everyone. This is a Q&A. Hey, Zymaris. Good to see you. Thanks, Wendy Hunt. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I learned about phase two. Hey, Jedi. Yeah, welcome. You just DM'd me? Aw, thanks. I'll check it out later. I learned about phase two from my fiance, Andre. Andre was mentored by this really wealthy guy, really wealthy guy named Peter, uh, like 13 years ago. Peter used phase two. He originally learned it from his own mentor, a guy named Kevin. And Kevin taught Peter about phase two. Peter was broke as shit. He grew up working class in Pennsylvania. And what he learned from Kevin allowed him to become a multimillionaire within like two years. And it's not about money. Like phase two is not at all about money. In fact, money becomes this like fucking like background process. <laughs> the same way that like your blood pumping through your body is a background process in your life. That's when money becomes a background process too. Or that's how money becomes a background process too. But anyway, Peter was really rich. He made his money throwing house parties, which most people would believe you can't do that, but he loved to party. He had tons of friends. He would invite all his friends to his house and they would just give him money as an expression of appreciation. And this is something that people have a really hard time understanding. He must be giving them something. He must be like throwing Epstein parties or like really weird shit or they've got something going on. It's like tax evasion. No, none of that. <laughs> Normal people in phase one, cannot possibly fathom the idea that when you give money to someone, whether it's a different person, a friend, a company, you get that money back because you haven't actually given anything away. You've given, you've given this concept to yourself. Tax evasion, right? <laughs> He's throwing house parties and they're giving him money to evade tax. <laughs> like whatever, okay. The idea of appreciation is when you give something, you get that thing back. <laughs> I look like an angle, what, like a 90 degree angle or, or what? Thanks. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, Abdal. Yeah, anyway, I'm just like rambling. Does anyone have a question? Cause this is a Q and A. Coming up with topics to talk about is not my fort, my forte. Uh, Zymaris, I hit 2.3 million views on Instagram. Wait, you had a viral video? No fucking way. That's amazing, congratulations. Uh, thank you, Arib, Arib. Ari, <laughs> usernames. Yeah, so my fiance learned about phase two from Peter and then he taught me about phase two, my fiance. It took me like three years <laughs> to be open to the information that he was giving me and I was struggling. Like 
he knew how to help me and he knew what I needed to do to stop struggling, but I just refused to accept the information. I refused to accept that my life didn't have to be so hard and that the solution was so simple because it really is simple. And that's why people struggle with getting into phase two sometimes because they're like, there has to be more to this. Like this is not possibly all that needs to happen. They overcomplicate it and they just make it hard. So when I finally accepted it after like three years of him trying to teach me, wait, is that Lacey as in my friend Lacey? <gasps> no, <laughs> you're coming to Phoenix? Oh my God, wait, uh, are you may be Lacey, you, I don't know, whatever, I'm just like rambling. <laughs> We're off to a great start. We're doing great here. Anyway, <sighs> where was I? Yeah, I finally accepted that life was easy. I was broke as shit over the last like three years. I tried everything. I told people all about like networking with millionaires because that's how my partner Andre makes all his money or made all his money working with millionaires. So I was like, let me just be on social media. I could talk about that. I do it all the time. I know tons of millionaires. It didn't turn into any money for me but I know exactly why. And it's because I was doing it to make money. <laughs> um, so when I accepted that things didn't have to be hard, that was in October. Oh, you've never, oh, I see. I have a friend named Lacey who lives in uh, New York and I haven't seen her in a really long time, but yeah, I know that'd be fun. You're coming to Phoenix in the summer. Oh boy. <laughs> Thanks hydration, man. Yeah. Um, right. I'm just like rambling right now. If anyone has a question, feel free to ask. Put it in the chat. I do my best to answer all questions or as many as possible, as long as they're not like vulgar or disrespectful. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, but you sure sound sure of it. So I feel like listening. Oh, thank you, Rose. I am sure of it. This has been a crazy, crazy experience. Let me just tell you, like, <laughs> let me just tell you, and I'm not trying to brag, but like this is crazy, okay? Hello everyone, welcome. Andre is Morpheus, he is Morpheus. <laughs> That's so funny. So I grew up like working class. Working class, you know, parents told me to, the value of hard work, like I had all these minimum wage jobs, almost every minimum wage job you can imagine, I probably did it. <laughs> and I really struggled with money until literally like three, four months ago. <laughs> Three, four months ago, I followed my intuition and I let go of the struggle and ended up writing a book with my partner, Andre, called Quantum Networking. Finished it in two weeks. It's still available. If you go to the link in my bio, you can read it. And after releasing that book, and again, letting go of the struggle, letting go of feeling like money had to be hard and attaching all this emotion to it, I had my first $10,000 month and it was effortless. <laughs> and then I had a $12,000 month and, I, and then I had a $15,000 month. <laughs> I had my first thousand dollar day of like last week. I had two of them in a row. And then yesterday was a thousand dollar day also. So it's just like increasing. <laughs> it's expanding with no effort. <laughs> it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy, but like it's real. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and that's because of phase two because of what I've learned and what I've implemented. So anyway, not to brag, I'm just excited. Okay, who are you? I'm Sam, I am a person. I live in Arizona. <laughs> Joseph the Burrito, how often do you talk to your intuition? Girl, it's okay to brag. Thank you, Patricia Black, for the reminder, because like genuinely, I love talking about this stuff. How often do I talk to my intuition? Uh, every day usually. Um, but if I don't, like sometimes it talks to me and I don't talk to it first. So I count that. The days in which I actually sit down and like talk to it and, and write down stuff that it wants me to know, that's like maybe a couple times a week. But other than that, I try to follow my intuition every day. Good morning from Indonesia. Hello. <laughs> Just talk more about making money without working. I would love to. J. Crawler. J.C. Roller. Wendy Hunt. I know the number one thing is to be happy. What else? Uh, what, you mean with phase two? It's not, well, the number one thing is to, well, uh, there's like a couple things. <laughs> Appreciate yourself and allow yourself to expand. 
giving yourself happiness is appreciating yourself, but it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be happy all the time. <laughs> That's like a mainstream manifesting thing. Yeah, you do not have to be happy all the time in phase two. Yeah, you can be fucking miserable and still create things because the idea that there are negative emotions is bullshit and it's ridiculous and it's just confusing. So yeah, giving yourself happiness is self-appreciation because people are so used to not giving themselves happiness. So used to sitting there thinking about what sucks and talking about what sucks. So when you take at least a few minutes a day or a few days or whatever, and you just allow yourself to be like, it's not so bad. You know, I'm creating my life. I don't mind myself. I'm enjoying my Starbucks that I get, but I don't always let myself enjoy because I'm worrying about my commute or whatever. That's self-appreciation. So yes, happiness. <laughs> I want whatever you're having. Phase two, honey, phase two. We're not having a wedding. <laughs> Andre and I are not getting married. We're just like committed. Yeah, can you give us a dramatic Hollywood eye roll faint? Uh, no. <laughs> I could try. I'm overthinking it already. I'm overthinking it. I've been selling art with no effort. There you go, Patricia. See, I fucking told you. Like, <laughs> someone earlier asked, like, can you talk more about making money with no effort? I don't have to talk about it because other people can talk about it for me. <laughs> yeah, I sell books with no effort. Patricia sells art with no effort. We have clients and people in our community who are just like collecting money with no effort. It's a thing. Speaking of making money with no effort, we have a masterclass on that topic this coming Friday. And the price is gonna go up to $250 tomorrow. So if you wanna sign up today at the lowest possible price, do it today. Uh, you can read more about that in the description. So just go to the link in my bio and then it's the second button from the top. <sighs> okay, Todd Olson, specific ideas how we could better invest in public education. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> That's a funny question though. Robbie Oaks Music, where can we learn more about phase two? Okay, great. If anyone's wondering about phase two, like what the fuck is it? I would recommend my book called Quantum Networking. That was the original book that we wrote. So if you go to the link in my bio and then uh, the top button is gonna say quantum cash. Tap on quantum cash and then scroll to the bottom and you'll see an option to buy quantum networking or you can get both of them. I would recommend that you get both but quantum networking is more about like phase two specifically. Yeah, I'm allergic to working, same, same, it's okay. It is okay if you're allergic to working. Yeah, the shit works. <laughs> I'm sorry if you answered already, what is phase two? Phase two is like, it's like a methodology for living life. It's very simple and it gives you all your power back. I won't compare it to mainstream manifesting because mainstream manifesting is like kind of also a methodology for living life, but it's, it's better. <laughs> it's better than that. It works better it's clearer, it's simpler. There's no like shaming and blaming like there is in mainstream manifesting, but yeah. Basically you get all your power back and you create your entire experience. That's what phase two is. Which is why people like Peter, my fiance's mentor, were able to get super rich, <laughs> make lots of money, be really wealthy and have tons of time freedom by throwing house parties. Like that was what he did for money. Well, for fun. He didn't do it for money. He did it for fun. And then money was like a byproduct. Yeah. Thank God I wasn't wanting to be happy 24 seven. No, I feel you. I feel you. The whole like constant happiness thing is such a fucking downer. Ironically, being happy all the time, major downer. <laughs> but yeah, there's no positive or negative emotions. There's just energy that you experience different ways. So when you're judging the experiences that you're having, like if you're judging the experience of anxiety, that's not good. <laughs> you're limiting yourself. It's, it's just an experience that you're adding meaning to and telling stories about, which is why it feels so shitty when really anxiety is just energy the same way happiness is just energy and joy is just energy and laughter is just energy and sadness is just energy. It's just the different stories and the experiences that you are having that you associate with that energy. But that's the energy that you used to create your experience. So 
pro tip all of you who are listening right now if you want like a tip to walk away with if you look around in your life and you see things that are like really consistent happening all the time like for for a lot of people it's money that's like money problems that are really consistent other people whatever whatever it is that's happening a lot in your life that keeps repeating because you're emotionally invested in it in other words you react to it emotionally every single time it happens whether you realize it or not that's why it's still happening so money problems can be resolved when you take the emotion out of money <laughs> but there's a caveat to that something <laughs> i'm gonna shit all over mainstream manifesting today i'm just like feeling it whatever it's gonna happen and if you ask any questions just give me a minute i'm gonna get to them I'm gonna shit on mainstream manifesting. Being so excited about money and like, oh, I create money because I celebrate. I have like a money dance that I do every time money comes into my account. Oh my God, like money, wow. That's also adding energy to money. <laughs> so when that happens, when you add happy energy to money and then one day you don't make any money, guess what fucking happens? You feel bad. You're like, what do I do? How do I fix this? Shit, what's going on? And that also blocks your money flow. So like I described earlier, where money in phase two becomes like a background process, the same way your blood circulating in your body is a background process, you're not adding any emotion to it. Do you sit there like, where's my blood? <laughs> where's my blood? Oh my God, is it? It's in my foot, yes. My blood is circulating through my legs, yes. No, you don't do that, but you do that with money which cuts off the flow. <laughs> so remove the emotional energy, the emotional investment for money or anything else in your experience that you keep dealing with and it will disappear. It will stop happening effortlessly. I promise you that. Just try it. It's like so cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you don't know me. I'm 21. I want to start making connections with rich people. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, you should start with my book, Quantum Networking. So yeah um i teach things from a phase two perspective you don't know me which is different than what i used to teach because i've learned new things right so i would really recommend reading quantum networking i can't sum it up all for you right now because it's there's a lot to it again this is from phase two perspective this isn't from like a normal standard phase one perspective start with quantum networking it's in my bio tap the link and then the top button and scroll to the bottom Okay, the shit works. Hey, I have so much energy tied up into money. Yes, I feel you. I feel you. Hey, my matchmaker. My roommate wanted to celebrate my art sale, and I was like, meh. <laughs> I appreciate that you were like, yeah, whatever. You can still celebrate. There's no reason not to celebrate, but celebrate to celebrate. Celebrate to enjoy celebrating. Don't celebrate for money or like celebrate. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Like just have a party to have a party. Don't have a party for any particular reason. Yeah, I'm depressed. I feel you. Well, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with being depressed. In fact, I would highly recommend you stop labeling yourself as depressed because the more you say I am depressed, the more you create depression. Yeah, that's kind of like a secret that most people are not brave enough to say, but if you're depressed, you're creating your own depression because you like suffering. Um, gonna be blunt with you gonna be honest with you you don't have to listen to what I'm saying in fact you can leave if, if it's too much for you to hear but I'm giving you the freedom that you're looking for um, if anyone here is suffering from depression and you're always talking about how I'm so depressed I'm so depressed like this is why I can't do what I want to do because I'm depressed guess what you're creating depression you're emotionally invested in the experience of being depressed you're telling stories that perpetuate your depression. Pe people do this because there's really no other way to say it. Humans do this because we like to suffer. We like to struggle. Suffering and struggling is interesting and exciting. We think that fun and happiness and joy is interesting and exciting, but if it really was that interesting and exciting, we'd probably do it more. When you watch the news, most of it sucks because if it was always happy, no one would watch. <laughs> is this making sense like I'm just gonna be really honest with you 
we're all unlimited beings, or at least this is what I believe in from a phase two perspective. We are all unlimited beings and we came to be created the human experience to experience limitation. Because when you're an unlimited being and you can know everything, access everything, have any experience you want at the snap of a finger, nothing is off limits to you. The only thing that you you don't get to experience is limitation, struggling, suffering. So that's the purpose of the human experience to hide our limitlessness from ourselves, experience limitation, that's the phase one, and then shift to phase two. Not everyone will shift to phase two in their lifetime, but you can always do it again. There's no limit. When you die, you can come back. <laughs> so yeah. I watched the butterfly effect. You look like Amy Smart. Thanks. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me catch up on some comments here. The work allergy. What is quantum money about scores galore? It's about money. <laughs> quantum cash, my book that you're asking about, I think, if I'm assuming correctly, is about how money works in phase two specifically, like money in, in phase two. Yeah. As quantum network. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. You have to take responsibility for everything in your life in phase two. Yes. Do I believe tax loopholes are profitable? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really give a shit about tax loopholes. That's funny though. Is phase two more about feelings, habits, or mindset? It's not about mindset. Mindset is garbage. Mindset work is bullshit. It doesn't work. <laughs> Yet there are massive industries that are meant to help people with their mindset, but it does nothing because it's all about your feelings. So I would say out of the three that you put there, it's about feelings more than anything else. <clears throat> Ibrahim, I'm dying to open up a holistic healing center and use astrology to cater to everyone's needs. Do it then, if that's what you feel like doing. Okay. All right. Mindset works, bro. Speak for yourself. Okay. You tell yourself that. Anyway. I uh, had so much energy tied up into money. I also never celebrate and then I feel like a brat because others do it. That's funny. Well, you're adding meaning, <laughs> Marilyn, now. Adding meaning, feeling like a brat, nothing wrong with it. It's just important to be aware when you're doing it. You're creating a depression loop and making it a habit. Yes. Thank you for being you. Love the truths you share. Thank you. Believing in the good. The honor of struggle. Yes. Honor of struggle. There is so much honor in struggling. That's how we fit in with other people. There are literal cultures and tribes and groups of people and even countries that are united in struggle. <laughs> if they didn't have a struggle to fight against collectively, what other reason would they have to connect? That's not to say that they would have no other reason to connect. What I'm saying is the way they see it right now, their connection comes from their struggle. And then they wonder why they're always struggling. <laughs> hey, Fiery Fable. Sometimes I celebrate doing nothing. There you go. Yeah, give yourself treats for taking the time to be lazy. I love that. Would you say you believe this or you know this? I know this. I know this. I know this, but I know that people who are watching may not know that they also know this. So that's why I say this is how I see it. This is my opinion. But when I say that, it's because I know it to be true from my own personal experience. My face is looking slim. Thank you. <laughs> it's probably because my dance class last night that was very um, intense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Your face is, uh, name cannot be blank. Hey, I was intrigued with your content. Some tips made sense, but from ideas to actions, I'm missing. Yeah, it's because you think there is action. There is no action. I mean, like sometimes I guess technically like action is a thing, but fundamentally, fundamentally, there is not supposed to be any real action because if you look at the world from a phase two perspective, the world isn't real. There is no real world. It is an illusion. It's a hologram. So that means you can't physically manipulate the world around you by taking action. What you can do though is allow yourself to have certain experiences and expand and not judge yourself and not compare yourself and not limit yourself. And when you do that, things change. There is no action that you need to take, but we take action because that's part of the human experience. It's 
if you could just create things with the snap of your finger, that wouldn't be the human experience. That would be the, the I don't know, <laughs> the God experience or whatever. <laughs> but that's not the experience you're having right now. So from a phase two perspective, if you're thinking about, okay, what action steps do I have to take? There are none. You do what you feel like doing, but you allow yourself, you just allow yourself. Like you say, I allow myself to have this experience. And then whatever inspiration and motivation comes up for you, that's the action you take. I can't give you action steps. I can just tell you what you're struggling with is because you're struggling with it. <laughs> so decide not to struggle. Take your power back from struggling. Okay. Networking is not different anywhere. That's funny though. <laughs> I say that a lot, yes. Do I know something about the Roth IRA? What is with these finance questions? I know a couple things. I used to work in finance. Isn't mindset supposed to aid in your feelings? Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Again, this is my opinion. And I know this to be true for myself, but take this as my opinion, okay? Mindset is stories. Thoughts and words and speaking are all stories. Everything you could possibly say, even if it's like positive, like, I'm abundant or I'm limitless or whatever. That's a story. Okay. Your feelings don't require stories. There is only one feeling. Let's get this straight on fundamental level. There's no different feelings. There is just emotional energy with stories attached to it. In other words, anger is the same as happiness, just a different story. It's the same energy, just experienced differently. So, isn't mindset supposed to aid in your energy? No. Mindset informs the way you experience that energy. But you can create without having a story. In fact, in phase two, I highly encourage people to create without having a story. One of the things that mainstream manifesting teaches people is that they need to know what they want. You got to know what you want. You got to know down to the smallest detail exactly what you want. You got to know how many chairs you want to have around the table at your house and how many square feet that house is going to have if you're going to create it. You have to know what you want. First of all, that's overcomplicated as shit. <laughs> it's so overcomplicated. But you can create the house that would be perfect for you without having any logical idea of what the house would be like. Because your intuition, your consciousness, your higher self is the version of you that sees everything. It knows you better than you know yourself and it can create, you can create your dream home, for example, that's just an example, without actually knowing what that's going to look like or what it's going to be, where it's going to be located, how many chairs it has around the dining room table, how many square feet it is. But when you walk into that house, you're going to be like, this feels so right. I love this house. This is amazing. And then everything about that house is going to be perfect for you. But you didn't logically figure it out. You didn't decide what you wanted. You just knew that you could create that. You energetically, with your emotional energy, allowed yourself to experience the perfect house. And you told yourself no stories about it. So mindset work and feelings are not associated. They, they're not the same. Like they don't work together. Okay. People associate them. Your mindset informs your feelings, but that's just stories. It's just stories. That's why for me specifically, an experience that I've created for myself is uh, maybe TMI, but because how do I explain this? Okay. When I experience anger, it kind of comes out like orgasm. <laughs> it's like erotic because I stopped associating those stories with that energy and I associate different stories with that energy. I'm like kind of rambling. Are you guys following? Like I don't experience anger as anger anymore. I experience it as this kind of erotic sensation. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> is this making sense? Please let me know if this is yeah let us know <laughs> okay i'm just like rambling here okay thank you ferratees yeah all right let me catch up on some questions here can you touch on the madison 757 can you touch on the energy of money and creating more than you consume 
Can you touch on the energy of money and creating more than you consume? Uh, with regard to creating more than you consume, um, well, the thing is, <laughs> okay, from a phase two perspective, and I know this to be true through my own personal experience, consuming as in like spending money, which I'm assuming that's what you're asking about. Spending money is creating money because if everything is you, everything is you, like you created everything, including the utility company, the bank, the whatever you're paying, like all the things that you don't want to be giving your money to, you created those things too. So when you give money away, you're just paying yourself. It's just circulating. It will come back to you. People struggle with this because they don't know that and they don't accept that the money they're giving away is going to come back. So they have this, this like uptight energy. Like, I don't want to pay you, but I'm going to, cause I feel obligated to. They're cutting off their own money coming back to them. It's like, yeah. So you can't possibly consume more than you create from a phase two perspective, consuming spending is creating money. So that's that regarding the energy of money. Don't fucking worry about the energy of money. It doesn't have an energy. <laughs> I say that not because it's like, like scientifically true. I say that because money being an energy is a very confusing way to think about money. The best way that I can explain it is money is like your blood. It flows. It's always flowing and it will flow to you in any quantity. But the reason you struggle financially is because you're cutting it off. When you stop cutting it off and you allow yourself to expand and experience more, it grows with you. So the more money you spend, knowing that you're just gonna get it back, the more money you create. But if you're scared to spend money, you're not gonna get money back in greater amounts. <laughs> like I'm at this point now where I'm very comfortable with spending up to like $1,200 at a time. Totally fine. Spending $1,200, no problem. Here's my fucking card. But if I were to spend like $4,000, even though I can afford it, my butthole would be clenching a little bit. I'll be honest with you. But because I'm afraid to spend $4,000, I'm not creating like 4K in a day. I can create $1,000 in a day or $1,200 in a day effortlessly because that's the max that I'm willing to spend at one time. So it's now... It's like the ball's in my court now. Am I going to take the leap and spend $4,000 on something? I can. The moment I do that, I expand to the point where I can spend that money. That's not to say, or I expand to the point where I'm creating that level of money on a daily basis. Are you following? Because I'm totally just like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I give really long-winded answers. I'm trying to be very thorough. Is it too much? It's fine, okay. In Latin culture, there's so much worship of struggling. That's really interesting, I believe it, Patricia Black. What are your three favorite books, Sergio Roman? My, my top favorite book is called, mm, interesting question, depending on the genre. My favorite nonfiction book, which is like a, um, what do you call it, a biography? No, autobiography is called Scribbling the Cat. No, it's called Don't Let's Go to the Dog Snipe by Alexandra Fuller. Scribbling the Cat is another one of her books. Love it, it's so good. Another book that I like is called Busting Loose from the Money Game. Busting Loose from the Money Game is about phase two, so check that one out. Yeah. Okay, Joseph the Burrito. So sorry, I'm, I'm missing so many. Uh... <laughs> okay. Do I feel like it's too much? It's not too much. <laughs> People are like, no, keep talking. Okay. Okay. I think you spoke about an energetic deficit. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't think I've ever used the words energetic deficit. If I did, it was probably in my older content. Because, you know, my content has been me coming to understand all these things. So for me, money has been simplified very much simplified. I don't think about any type of energetic deficit. I just think to myself, am I allowing money to flow to me or am I being really uptight? Yes, I'm allowing it. No, I'm being really uptight. Okay, fine. Whatever's happening. How am I feeling right now? Do I feel expansive? Do I feel like good? 
Or do I feel kind of like, oh man, is someone gonna buy my shit today? Like, oh, I better post a sale so people buy. That energy of being like, how can I make more money? Cuts off money. <laughs> Let me tell you all a secret. Let me tell you all a big fucking secret. You know why so many people struggle with money in phase one? It's because doing anything to make money cuts off your money flow. But why does everyone have a fucking job to make money? They struggle financially. The minimum wage is so low. People are struggling. They can't possibly have more than the bare minimum that they need to survive because that's what they're creating because they don't understand that doing things to make money, like doing it for the purpose of making money with the expectation of making money cuts off the natural money flow that is constantly happening. It's just like the blood in your body. You don't have to worry about your blood flowing. You don't have to like do things to get your blood to flow. It just flows. It's the same thing with money, but people are too afraid to accept that first of all. And they're thinking that in order to make money, they have to go to work. That is just, it's not, I can't blame anyone because that's the point of the game. That's the point of the human game to be limited, to struggle and to suffer. But once you know this, you can't go back. So consider why you're going to work. Are you going to work or are you running your business because you want to experience going to work and running your business? Or are you going to work and running your business because you want to make money? If you're doing it because you want to make money, you're probably struggling financially. Or you're making some money, but it's never like enough and you have to work really hard to get it. Yeah. Okay. I made the most money in my life this year. I didn't work. I got lots of massages and saunas. There you go. There you go. Thank you, royalty forever. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to hear what you think about them. I go to work to get a fat paycheck. That's good. I hope you enjoy your paycheck and I hope the time you're spending at your job is worth it. <laughs> Layla Briggs, how much are your books? Yes, there's two books. Two books. They're both $22. So yeah, 44 total if you want to get both of them or just 22. Girl, I'm anemic. I worry about my blood flow. Ugh. Do you want a harsh truth or you want to just leave it at that, Rose? Because <laughs> I can give you the harsh truth, but you're probably not going to want to hear it. Okay. How long did it take you to write your book? Two weeks. Two weeks. The book. Uh, both of my books are 130 pages long and they both come with a two and a half hour long audio book. I put a lot of effort into them. No, that's not true. I put a lot of care into them. A lot of effort, no. A lot of care, yes. Finished them in two weeks. Yes. The second book is ready. It definitely is ready. I'm so sorry. I missed a bunch of people's questions. So I'm going to go back up and see if I can answer some. Uh, but if, if you want to post your question again, that would be fine also. The harsh truth rose. Okay. Girl, I'm anemic. I worry about my blood flow. Here's, here's the thing. First, you're telling yourself the story that you're anemic. You're telling yourself a story that you're ill and that there's a problem. Second, I worry about my blood flow is you saying I'm putting emotional energy into being concerned about my blood flow. So what you are literally creating as your experience are problems with your blood <laughs> and stories that you're anemic. You're creating your own anemia. Very controversial take because people are invested in the idea that they're victims victims of their bodies is like near the top of the things that people are victimized by, right? Our bodies, our health, my health is failing me. My body is failing me. No, you're creating that experience by telling yourself the story and then investing the emotional energy into the story. So what can you do about this? Well, you can take your emotional energy back. Like what if you experienced being anemic without worrying about it. Like what if you were just anemic, but you didn't worry <laughs> and you didn't invest your emotional energy and you didn't like constantly think about being anemic and worry about your blood. What if it just was a thing? 
because there's a lot of like satisfaction that comes from having a problem <laughs> to be honest like there's a lot of connection and satisfaction that comes from being able to say oh yeah i have a problem i'm suffering i'm struggling you know i'm dealing with this issue what if you gave that up what if it was just like problem no i don't have a problem i'm fine no more emotional response i would bet that you can let go of your experience with anemia by removing your emotional attachment to having health issues and stop and no longer telling the stories if you have medicine that you're taking take it but take the energy out of it and take the stories out of it okay try that if you want to you don't have to <laughs> but anyway oh yeah yes yes people love to bond by complaining yes that's true I've had so many limitations to fit in with others. I feel you there, Jedi. It's me, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. What do I think of Sammy Ingram if it's never heard of it? Okay. Caleb Reps. I'm a musician. How do I make, how do I take my, how do I take my musics out there? Some of these platforms require you to pay. Okay, so what are you worried about? Are you worried about having to pay to get your music out there? First of all, stop telling yourself that you have to pay to get your music out there. Second, pay it. What was I just saying? There's nothing that's different than you. If you give your money away to someone, you're just giving it to yourself and it will come back to you. So the fact that you're afraid of paying for something, like listen to yourself. How do I get my music out there? I have to pay to put it on these platforms. Do you want to get your music out there or not? Because if a few dollars is going to stop you from doing that, you clearly don't want to get your music out there that much. Stop believing that the platforms are not you. If you give money to them, you're going to get that money back. Not only that, giving money to those platforms, which is really just you, is you appreciating yourself and you appreciating your music. You clearly do not appreciate your music if you're like, oh, I have to pay to use these platforms. Sorry, just being honest with you. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize. No more apologizing. Okay. <sighs> mm. Okay. I hear you, Red's Little Devil, regarding trauma associated with, like, illness, but you're also telling stories and investing emotional energy into it. If you're emotionally invested in the idea that you can't heal unless you address your trauma, that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to be forced to dig up your trauma. You're going to be forced to find every last little piece of it before you can heal. That does not have to happen unless you want it to. Again, that's another place where people invest a lot of energy into suffering and struggling. Oh, I'm traumatized. I can't heal because of it. I have to fix this first. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. <sighs> Sorry to burst your bubble. See, I did it again. I just apologize again. Yeah. Just be wary of the stories you're telling yourself, you know? Okay. How do you internalize the new mindset? Yes. I do not. El Donoski. Uh, I saw your question a few times. How do you internalize the new mindset? It's not a mindset. Just let go of the idea that it's a mindset. <sighs> Accepting and internalizing this information is really just a matter of allowing you to, allowing yourself to experience it. Like it's that simple. If you're resonating with what I'm saying, meaning you're like, yeah, okay, no, this feels good. This feels right. Something about what she's saying is like true. It's resonating with you. You created me to tell it to you. And now you're like, okay, this is good. There's nothing you need to do except allow yourself to know this. And as you allow yourself to know this or allow yourself to remember this, because that's the thing, you forgot all of this. I'm just reminding you. Yeah. Allow yourself. As you allow yourself, things are going to start happening that continues this path for you. You don't have to forcefully internalize anything. That's a fucking stupid like mindset manifestation concept making things more complicated than it needs to be if this resonates with you accept it appreciate yourself for creating it because you did create me you created me to tell you this and just allow it to expand that's it you validate my spending habits there you go there you go there's no reason to like not spend money on something <laughs> except for 
if when you spend that money, you feel like guilty about it because then you're cutting off the money coming back to you. Whew. All right. I want to come hang with you in Arizona. Do it. Why not? Okay. What days and times do you go live? Uh, I do not have a consistent live streaming schedule, but if you follow me on Instagram, I tend to post like notifications when I'm going to go live. So yeah, <laughs> Instagram is where I'm focusing more of my energy on posting content. So if anyone's been following me here and wondering why I'm not posting as much, it's because I'm focusing on Instagram. So I would highly recommend that you go follow me on my Instagram to keep up with more of my content. Okay. Tips on listening to your intuition. Royalty Forever, love the books. I'm listening to Busting Loose from the Money Game. I love that book. Ah, uh, so good. I'm glad you enjoyed my books. I want to become better at handling my finances. Where do I start? Red Moon Rising. <laughs> okay, listen, to, look, look at the story you're telling yourself. I want to become better, meaning I'm not good at handling my finances. Stop telling yourself that you're bad at handling your finances, okay? Take the emotional energy out of that story. What do you feel? You probably feel guilty. You probably feel like bad. You probably feel inadequate and insecure. You probably feel like you're not good enough. All of that is causing you to struggle with money. Once you get that out of the way, you'll discover that you don't have to handle your finances. You don't have to handle your blood flowing. It just handles itself. But if you want to indulge in the game of handling finances, then that's a game you can play. Personally, not a very fun game for me. I just like it when it handles itself. But if you like money, if you like handling money, whatever, by all means. What you have to stop doing is telling yourself that you're bad at it and emotionally investing in the experience of being bad at it. So there you go. Patricia R. Cole. Hey, lady. Is that a lady? I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, I there's a very tiny... Okay, yes, I think so. So sorry. Anyway, profile pictures are way too small and I have a hard time seeing them. Okay. <laughs> I'm worried about paying my rent. How can I stop worrying and let it take care of itself? So I don't know if you're going to like this answer. Just stop worrying. Okay. Something that people are worried about. <laughs> this is really funny. Something people worry about is their emotional response being perpetual, meaning they worry that if they feel through their feelings that they're attaching to a certain experience, like for example, struggling with your rent, they worry that if they feel through those feelings, the feelings are going to come back like dandelions or whatever. No, that's not true. When you feel through all those feelings, that experience becomes like boring to you and you don't get an emotional response out of it anymore. So all you need to do, Patricia, is literally feel the worry. Just feel the worry. Let it come up. Lay on your bed, relax, let that energy flow through your body. It's gonna be really intense. You may feel nauseous, you may cry. Maybe you'll even laugh, you might get aroused. Just let the energy flow. Just let the energy flow. You can think or don't think. If you do think, don't like attach meaning to any of the thoughts. Just let them go, right? Let them float by. And as you do that, you're reducing the amount of emotion that you're investing in that experience. And eventually, if you do this enough, and it won't take very long, it really doesn't, do that enough and you will have no more energy invested in that experience. It will become boring because you literally burned up the energy that was attached to it. And when you burn up the energy that's attached to that experience, it just like stops. That was what happened with me with money. I was like, you know what? I'm so fucking tired of being upset about money. I'm just not going to be upset. And then I wasn't upset anymore. And then my money experience like exploded. It just changed. If you feel through your worry, it won't come back. There is only a certain amount of energy attached to any experience. You can't like physically quantify it, like there's no number, but I'm just saying that so you can like visualize it and understand. There's only a certain amount of energy attached to any experience. Burn through that energy and your attachment to that experience just goes away. And then the experience changes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Laying in bed and feeling shit is the magic sauce. It totally is. And it feels so good. Oh my God. <laughs> it feels so good. 
yeah, not feeling the feelings is a, is a great way of having them come back. That's exactly right, Livy and Storm. I will say, I did say this earlier. I touched on it a little bit. It may take you more than once, okay? If you lay down and you feel your feelings about a certain experience, maybe you get through it in one sitting. Maybe it takes you two, three, or maybe like five sittings, depending on how strong the attachment is, but you will get through it. And it doesn't take years. It doesn't take months. It doesn't take years. It takes as long as you want it to take, right? So do that. Just do that. It's very simple. Okay. Rose, would you work a job you don't like but pays really well ever? Fuck no. You know why? Because I'd rather have time freedom than money freedom. I have money freedom and time freedom, honestly. Like, <laughs> I have it set up in my own personal life where I create money whether I'm working or not. That's like the secret sauce, right? Money is a byproduct of anything. Money is a byproduct of whatever you allow it to be a byproduct of. I knew this lady. I used to, she used to do like hypnosis for me back when I was into, into like hypnosis and stuff. She set it up in her own life. <laughs> this was so cool. It was so inspiring. Where every time she went out dancing, she would make money. <laughs> it wasn't because she was doing it to make money. She just allowed herself to have the experience of every time she goes out dancing just to dance, she comes home and there's like money in her account. Thousands of dollars, two, three thousand dollars. Someone paid her for this. Someone paid her for that. But it comes in when she's dancing. And I was like, that's freaking cool. You can do that too. It's just that you haven't allowed yourself to do it. You never sat down and said, you know what? I feel like allowing myself to experience creating money from anything. <laughs> All you've done so far is allow yourself to experience money as a byproduct of work. So <laughs> that's why you have to work for money. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I started doing that laying in bed, feeling whatever comes up. I so I feel so light afterwards. Exactly. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. Mar Rosa. So do we simply keep repeating? I'm willing to admit. Uh, you only do that as long as you're feeling energy about the statement. You don't have to do that. The exercise where you're laying down and feeling the feelings is different than the exercise that you're talking about, the statements exercise. Can you do them both at the same time? Yes. But what I'm just saying is you can lay down and feel your feelings and you can also do the statements exercise. They're not the same thing. Okay. How do you feel through the worry? You literally just... <laughs> Okay, like I was describing earlier, worry is the same energy as happiness, as sadness, as anger, as sexual arousal. It's the same energy. There's only one energy and you experience it with different stories and like circumstances, okay? So worry is just energy. If you lay down in your bed and you feel this energy in your body, which you will feel if you allow yourself to feel it, don't overcomplicate it. I'm literally just telling you to lay down, take a couple deep breaths, and just relax. Just relax. Do not look at your phone. Do not watch TV. Just exist to exist. Relax to relax. As you do that, you're going to feel this energy start to like move in your body. You might like suddenly have the urge to shake your arm, or you might feel really twitchy and tingly. That's that energy. <laughs> That's the worry. It's the energy that you're interpreting as worry. Okay. <sighs> yes. That feelings can... Okay, well, yeah. I totally get that. It sounds too good to be true. That was my struggle for like three years, which was why it took me three years to get to the point where I didn't have to suffer anymore. <laughs> but honestly, you know, there, you're the power here. Nothing is making it difficult for you. You're just making it difficult for yourself. And as soon as you decide that it doesn't have to be difficult is when it stops being difficult. <laughs> okay. My pleasure, Raven. Okay. What are you confused about, Hugh G? If we burn through negative feelings, how do we set up positive things? Okay. The problem in your question, Hugh G, is the idea that there's positive and negative. Listen to me when I say this, all of you. Ears forward, ears forward, okay? Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just like wanted to be a fourth grade teacher for a second here. 
There are no positive and negative feelings. There is just neutral energy that you tell stories about. That's the only difference between happiness and anger or sadness and joy. The story you tell and the circumstances in which you feel it, okay? Anger, happiness, sadness, joy, worry, depression, anxiety are all the same energy with different stories. There's no positive and no negative. As you feel through the energy, it's not the negative energy, it's the energy. You let go of the attachments to the experiences you're creating. And when you let go of those attachments, you create space for new things to happen. If you let go of your emotional attachment to struggling, you don't have to try to not struggle. You're just not struggling anymore. And the alternative to that is not struggling. <laughs> the alternative to struggle is not struggling, okay? Earlier, I was talking about how your intuition knows the perfect experience for you. It knows exactly what you want. You have no idea what would be best for you, but your intuition does. That's why you can create any experience without telling a story. You just create space. You allow yourself to experience it and your intuition's like, let me, let me line that shit up for you. I got you. You have no idea what you're going to get, but you're going to get it. And when you get it, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Oh my God, this is so awesome. That's how it works, okay? There is no negative energy. There's no positive energy. It's just energy that you're attaching to all the experiences you're having, okay? Yeah. Okay. Whew. Emotion equals energy in motion. Yes, goddess energy. A cookie for you. Can this be applied to raising kids? Yes, this can be applied to literally everything. Yes, worry is just energy like others, but you're telling yourself the worry stories. Just worry stories with neutral energy. Yeah. Okay. Clarity, please. I want to lose 45 pounds. How would I go about it? Mar Rosa. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to be hopping off in a minute. Like, I was just going to stream for an hour. So we have two more minutes. I'll take, like, one more question. Uh, wanting to lose 45 pounds. Okay, here's the thing. When you want something you are creating yourself not having it because you can't want something and also have it because if you have it, you don't want it anymore. So what you're saying is, I want to lose 45 pounds, meaning I'm not losing 45 pounds. So here's what to say instead. I feel like losing 45 pounds. When you say I feel like anything, it could be literally anything. I feel like creating a million dollars, or I feel like moving into a new apartment, or I feel like finding a better job, that creates space for you to have the experience. If you say, I want, I want, I want, I want, you're not going to create that because you are wanting. You're creating the wanting, okay? Start saying, I feel like losing 45 pounds. You can ask your intuition, what can I do? to create the experience of losing 45 pounds and your intuition will tell you, but make sure you do that action for the experience of doing the action. Here's where everyone fucks up. They go to the gym to lose weight. That's misalignment. <laughs> if you go to the gym to lose weight, you're going to be going to the gym for a very long time and getting very few results. <laughs> go to the gym to go to the gym. Losing weight is a byproduct of that. If you don't like going to the gym, you don't have to go to the gym. You can do whatever you fucking want to. You've just refused to allow yourself to experience losing weight as a side effect of, I don't know, taking a walk around the block. If you allowed yourself to lose 45 pounds as a byproduct of taking a walk around the block every day, it would happen. You walk to walk, you walk to enjoy your walk, you walk, you don't even think about your weight. And because you allowed yourself to experience losing the weight, as a byproduct of that experience, it happens effortlessly. But everyone fucks it up and makes it way too complicated, okay? I ended up gaining weight going to the gym to lose weight. Yeah, same. <laughs> All right. What you resist persists. I love that. What accent is this? Oh, I'm from New York, but it's not a New York accent. Okay. Last question. Negative experience is simply without to learn. Yeah, it's like contrast, Emprez. That's pretty much what you're describing, the experience of contrast. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> All this stuff feels so high level. How long did it take to understand? Uh, it, well, like I said earlier, it took me three years to accept that it was this simple. I feel like, um, it feels high level aspiring and on. I feel like it feels high level to you because it's simple. Yeah. How can it be this simple is usually what people are like wondering. How could it possibly be this? Simple? I know there's more to it than this. It, 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 there's gotta be more to it than this. If it's this simple, I just don't get it. Well, let go of the idea it has to be more complicated and then it will be very clear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm from Poughkeepsie. I'm from New York. Well, New York, obviously. Casanova. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, you could say that. Red Moon Rising. I feel like weighing, I would like to experience what it's like to weigh 120 pounds or I would like to experience what it's like to weigh 150 pounds. I feel like weighing 150 pounds. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So simple and free of convoluted logic. Exactly. Exactly. I feel like being a coach. Exactly, Brooklyn Chic. Exactly. I feel like being a coach, you can ask your intuition, what can I do to create the experience of being a coach? How could I create the experience of being a coach? You're going to get instructions and you need to follow those instructions immediately. This is where people fuck up though with their intuition. They get instructions and they're like, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? They question it. They bring logic into the equation and then they make it way more complicated than it needs to be. Your intuition will give you instructions that make no sense. Like literally they make no fucking sense whatsoever. But if you just do it, after you do it, you're going to be like, wow, I get it now. <laughs> I see why I was supposed to do that. Keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah. My grandparents lived in Manlius. No way. I was just thinking about Manlius earlier today. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Casanova. Kaz. Yeah. That logic. Mm. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. There's so many good questions. I appreciate all of you for being here. No thoughts. Head empty is actually helpful. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's not to say thoughts are bad. The problem is when you attach like meaning and energy to the thoughts, you know, like you're thinking and then something comes up and you're like, oh no, it's true. That's yeah, unnecessary. You can think, but just let it go. Just let them flow by. No thoughts, head empty is the perfect alternative to that. I live in Camillus. No way. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I love, yeah, cool. Okay. I just asked, how can I create the experience of weighing my goal weight? And I saw fruit. Okay, so if you allow yourself to have the experience of weighing your goal weight and eating fruit, <laughs> like as a byproduct of eating fruit, yeah, cool. Make sure you stop telling yourself any stories about how fruit has sugar in it and fruit's not good for you and fruit, eating fruit doesn't help you lose weight. Those are all bullshit stories. None of them are true. <laughs> it's only true if you invest your energy into it because that's what you create, okay? All right, tell us you will go live tomorrow. I wasn't planning on it. However, if you follow me on Instagram, I do go live every weekday at like nine in the morning, which is eight Pacific for 15 minutes. So just for a little bit every morning. So you can catch me there. 8 a.m. Pacific time weekdays on Instagram, not TikTok Instagram. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Thanks.